Every day, in trading rooms like this at Barclays Bank in New York, more than $200 billion of foreign currencies are bought and sold. Barclays is a major player in this 24-hour global market. This morning, chief foreign exchange dealer Jack Roche and senior dealer for sterling Steve Leipzig were monitoring their Tellerate screens when the Saudis announced an increase in oil prices. Sterling calls, please. There's oil news out. I'm going to buy sterling, I'm going to buy about 25 pounds, 60 a better. An increase in the price of oil could raise the value of the pound. Steve and Jack decide to buy 25 million pounds, speculating that the price will rise. Hello, my friend. Bob is New York. To disguise his strategy from the market, he instructs the traders of the other currencies to call out for prices. He buys his first five million pounds, then another, and with each wave of his hand, he will buy five million more. Take five. 59, 64. No, nothing. 63. Take five. Uh, you got five here. Take five. You got five here. Can I get those tickets real quick, got five right here. In less than a minute, Steve has bought 25 million pounds. He waits to see how the market will react. You might see the dollar go a little bit lower on that. Where is it now? Got him more? It's a little higher. See comes back, Jack. Here you go, Steve. They have guessed right. The price of sterling begins to rise. I need a couple more calls, all right? Because you're a little busy. The pound has risen one-tenth of a cent. Steve decides it's time to take his profit. He instructs his traders to find buyers. Nothing on 6570. Get higher ready now. Cable, Joey. Steve also contacts an interbank broker to get bids. 6671. Buyer calls begin to come in. 6974. 7170. With two successive waves of the hand, he sells his first 10 million pounds. A New York broker has sold another 10 million pounds. I still need calls coming in. Come on. The price has stopped rising. To preserve his profit, Steve must sell off his last 5 million quickly. With another call, the broker has found a buyer for his last 5 million. And he's out. Right. That's it. I'm out. I'm out. No, good. In less than three minutes, Barclays traders have made a profit of $32,000, buying and selling 50 million pounds. This real life transaction was an example of currency speculation one way in which international businesses can participate in the foreign exchange market. Other ways international business participate in the foreign exchange market are the facilitation of international trade and investment, and the investment of spare cash in short-term money market accounts abroad. Although these three avenues of participation in the foreign market offer international businesses vast opportunities, Adverse changes in the exchange rates can make seemingly profitable deals unprofitable, even disastrous. That's why, in today's global economy, it is absolutely critical that international businesses understand the influence of exchange rates on the profitability of trade and investment deals. The foreign exchange market is a market for converting the currency of one country into that of another country. This market has grown due to a shift away from a fixed world economy and an increase in global communications technology. I think it's fair to say that the new technology has linked the world into virtually a single efficient capital market. Uh, new instruments and further advances in the technology will probably enhance that capability even further and uh, mean that ultimately we're living in a world that's not only economically interdependent, but financially almost a single unit. Government economic policies used to be subject to a system of fixed exchange rates established at the World Monetary Conference at Bretton Woods, New Hampshire. If a country's trade balance went into deficit, foreign central banks would demand gold in exchange for currency. If a nation remained in deficit too long, 
it would lose its gold and its ability to trade with other nations. But a fixed system not permitted to be responsive to the free market was vulnerable to periodic crises. These crises took the form of sudden devaluations. The British government today devalued the pound by 14.3%, not only rocking the international financial community, but sending interest rates in London up two full points in one day. The, devaluation the reverberations of the devaluation the echoed throughout the free world. Other nations whose economies were closely linked to Great Britain's devalued their currencies as well. The world of fixed exchange rates finally fell apart when the dollar itself, the backbone of the system, could no longer command the confidence of the international financial community. I have directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar into gold or other reserves. I was there at the time in, in the government in, in 1970 and 71 when this thing became acute and we were considering even stronger measures such as uh, imposing quotas on imports from Japan in order to defend the dollar. So it was at that point that it was decided that rather than put the economy and the whole world economy through such a, uh, through such a ringer in order to avoid all these interferences with international trade and capital movements, the thing was just to do was just to let the dollar go down. I am determined that Nixon American called his action at the time a technical one hostile. to stabilize the sinking dollar. But in fact, he had lowered the curtain on the era of fixed exchange rates. Yet even amidst the turmoil of the currency crises, no one was certain that one era had ended and another just begun. Uh, in the 1960s, the uh, foreign exchange traders that I knew then relied awfully heavily for their information on the morning newspaper when they came as they read on the train on the way to work. And if uh, there were not uh, a currency crisis in Britain or France or someplace like that, uh, they might read, uh, there, there would be a news ticker somewhere in their office that they might look at occasionally, but uh, there was no heavy demand for uh, information about where the market was because the price was fixed. The market was a totally different market. Uh, we did not trade uh, between banks here in New York. We only used to use brokers. We used to trade with our cor correspondents abroad uh, via telex machines. Uh, yeah, yeah. To make a direct phone call overseas, it used to take probably a half hour because you had to go through the operator. Uh, direct dialing did not exist. With technology today, you can buy $50 million in a matter of uh, 20 seconds. By early 1973, governments had lost the ability to set the price of their currency. With the majority of the money held in the market in private hands, central banks were no longer the force they were in the 60s. That power had shifted to the traders. Since then, the market has grown rapidly. In 1985, the annual world market volume was approximately $50 trillion. In 1995, that volume had ballooned to over $360 trillion, making it the largest market in the world. I don't think anyone in the financial industry could have been sitting here 10 years ago and anticipated the dramatic changes that have occurred in technology, in deregulation, and an internationalization of financial markets. It has been a booming industry, not just booming financially, but in terms of innovations, in terms of new ideas and new techniques. As the foreign currency market has grown, it has also become more complex, creating a need for different exchange rates. Spot exchange rates are the standard rates at which a foreign exchange dealer converts one currency to another on a particular day. This rate is necessary to execute transactions immediately, but is not always the most favorable rate. A forward exchange rate is an exchange rate that governs future or long-term transactions. The rate locks in a rate of exchange for future use. This rate is agreed upon by both parties in the transaction and is based on expectations of what the market will do over the time period agreed upon. Another way to control rates of future transactions is by using a currency swap. A currency swap allows a business to simultaneously purchase and sell a given amount of foreign exchange for two different value dates. 
Currency swaps are used between international businesses and their banks, between banks, and between governments when it's desirable to move out of one currency into another for a limited period of time. Because large amounts of money and profit depend upon future exchange rates, it's imperative that international business understand the forces that determine these rates. Three things affect a country's long-run exchange rate movements. They are the growth in a country's money supply, the inflation rate of the country, and the nominal interest rates of that country. If any of these things are growing at a rapid rate, international business should take precautions when dealing with that country. While these factors have more of an impact on long-term rate exchanges, short-term movements may be due to other factors. Some of these are transportation costs, trade barriers such as tariffs, and psychological factors such as bandwagon effects among traders in the market. Besides a risk of future rates changing unfavorably for a business, there are other risks involved when dealing with the foreign exchange market. One such risk is that governments sometime restrict currency convertibility, much like the Soviet Union had done in the past. One way businesses can cope with this problem is to engage in counter-trading. Counter-trading is a barter agreement between international businesses that involves the trading of goods and services for other goods and services. All of these factors are examples of how the foreign exchange market has grown more and more complex over the past 25 years. Modern technology, such as computers and satellites, have given rise to a volatile global marketplace where changes can occur instantaneously. Adverse changes in the market can have an overwhelming effect on international business deals, turning apparently profitable deals into highly unprofitable ones. Understanding the foreign exchange market is absolutely critical to the success of modern international business. By understanding the risks of the foreign exchange market and the different ways to protect against these risks, international businesses can not only survive, but thrive in today's world economy.